Good evening and welcome back to Tekton Z. I'm ZSH Plays and this is episode 10. Wow, I can't believe we're at episode 10 already. I'm just uh, enjoying a drink in the Forest Cafe to celebrate. Today's going to be a big episode for two reasons. First, I've got a new microphone, so hopefully you can hear me a bit better. And secondly, we are going to finish Tekton Forest. So we've got Lima Heights, which you can see here. We've got the Binturong Bowl. We've got the Forest Cafe and we've got Flamingo Lake. Today, we're going to build the House of the Red Panda. So the House of the Red Panda, uh, it's not just a clever name. <laughs> um, this is based on an actual house, which I'm a big fan of. I saw it and I thought straight away that it would make a really good habitat. I decided that the red pandas would be the species that we put in there. It's modified, of course. Um, I'm not just going to build a um, semi-detached house and stick some pandas in it. We'll be changing it to suit their needs and, uh, and those of the guests. It's going to be on two levels. So there'll be ground level viewing, access through the front, and then there'll be gallery viewing as well so that when the pandas are climbing in their tree the guests will be able to see them at eye level. The two towers that I'm building here are part of a what would be a stairwell I think in the original house but here what's going to happen is there's going to be a climbing frame inside it so that from the balcony whether the pandas are climbing outside or inside the guests will be able to see them at eye level. Uh, they don't climb as much in the game as they do in real life, which is a bit frustrating, but that's why I've got the ground level viewing in as well, so that whether they're uh, up or down, you can uh, you can get a good view of them. The original house that this is based on is a modernist build, like I say, uh, but a lot more modern with a with a small M than the, than the Tecton buildings that I base most of the aesthetic of the zoo on. And there's a bit more ornamentation. Uh, you can see me putting some in here, which does sort of break the uh, <laughs> the rules of the zoo that I've set up. Uh, and so I decided to delete it later on. I should discuss really the, the whole modernist thing with the caveat that my knowledge of this uh, extends mainly to Googling, <laughs> which is always dangerous. Uh, but as far as I understand it anyway, um, modernism came along in the 1930s um, was a movement, as I've discussed before, to um, make buildings with all the new materials that were out at the time, i.e. reinforced concrete, plate glass, and things like that that allowed you to make buildings in, in all sorts of shapes that people had never seen before, and was uh, pretty amazing. Um, and then it got pretty popular, and I think in around the, the 60s, as a movement, it was sort of replaced by what was called brutalism, which was a new way of building which stripped back the um, the sort of design aesthetic of modernism even more so rather than thinking that anything that goes on the building needs to have a function and then how can we make it beautiful from from my understanding anyway they were more everything has to have a function and the function is the beauty regardless of, of what it looks like which is why most brutalist buildings tend to have a small um, sort of following of people who love them but the general public at large tends to think they're pretty awful. <laughs> um, so if you think of, especially if you live in the UK, all those 60s and 70s council buildings, high rises, car parks, supermarkets, that are all just blocks of unpainted concrete with all sorts of uh, crazy things coming off the sides and it looks like it was designed by somebody who was asleep at the time. Uh, that's brutalism. <laughs> um, I think it was popular because it was very cheap to build in my extremely uneducated opinion. And uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any uh, better knowledge of this than me, because like I say, Googling and, and Wikipedia can only take you so far. But um, eventually it was replaced by the sort of modern with a small M style of building that we have today, which I, I believe is known as post-modernism, whereby they've retained the, the new materials that, that we use in this suit, but drops the whole if something doesn't have a function it shouldn't be on the building thing and went back to trying to make buildings you know as beautiful as they could be just with ornamentation and, and things like that and if, if something doesn't have to have a function to be on the building and this building that we're making here is slightly more of a post modernist building especially with the decorations attached to the front and like I say I get rid of the ones on the tower because it was just too much I would really want this to sit in with the rest of the zoo nicely but the 
the new wooden pieces from the Africa pack up on the balcony. They actually serve a function, uh, they stop the guests falling off. <laughs> Always useful. So I was able to retain those and I just got rid of the ones on the tower because they don't really have a function. I experimented with a fabric covering for the roof as well, which is what the original house had. But again, straight away I thought that does not that does not fit. So I got rid of it and replaced it with more lovely concrete because you can't have enough concrete, especially not in this zoo. The facade at the front that you can see, that is all I'm working from. I had one photo of the front of the building. I have no idea what the sides of the back, the top, anything else looks like. So the rest of it I've just made up. Um, and I think it fits together quite nicely. Um, it looks very simple. The back here, it gets heavily modified later. I just wanted to make sure I have the sizes right for the pandas. And if there are any architects watching, uh, I'd like to apologize for the absolute state of that attempt to explain modernism and postmodernism. But uh, that's, uh, that's about as good as you're gonna get from me, I'm afraid. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the inside of the habitat. So inside to reflect the, the slight change to the style of the outside, Rather than making a completely naturalistic habitat like I've done in all the other enclosures, I wanted to try and build a garden for the pandas. So it's still going to include everything that they need to be happy. And that'll all be built from, from wood and, and then natural trees and uh, shrubs, etc. But I wanted to lay it out like a formal garden rather than a natural environment. Um, so. We've got a nice water source. I don't think the pandas swim in the game, but in real life they do. Uh, they'll have a good swim, do the red pandas. So I put in a water feature for them and that'll have a bridge over it for keeper access. And so they can wander along next to the circular windows for the guests to see them. Uh, it's quite shaded, this building. I contemplated moving it or spinning it rather so that it was more in the sun. But just from where I'd built the, uh, the forest and all the other enclosures, this is where this sort of needed to go. Uh, I didn't really have the, the ability to spin it to face in a different direction. It wouldn't really have, have worked as well as it does, um, which is something I need to consider more, I think, in, uh, in future areas of the zoo, <laughs> where the sun is, seeing as you can't really change that. Um, so I've put quite a lot of lights in around the, uh, the water feature to brighten it up and now we're just bringing back some more aspects of the front to tie it together. While I'm putting those stairs in, if you haven't seen it already, I finally got around to making a cinematic tour of London Zoo 1985, which I put up on the channel a few days ago. So if you're interested in seeing the original buildings that I got the inspiration for most of the buildings in this zoo from, uh, check that out. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video and I'll put one in the comments as well. The circular windows uh, are not in the original house, uh, unsurprisingly. That is uh, one of the things that I like to put in the zoo that I've added in there, as well as the metal poles that we, uh, that we use all the time. And that should tie this in nicely with the rest of the zoo. When you look at a, a real zoo, unless it's only just opened, you'll see enclosures from all sorts of different time periods, depending on how long the zoo's been open, and they've often got very different styles to them. So if you look at London Zoo, for instance, there are things like the Giraffe House that was built in the early 19th century. And then you'll have the Penguin Pool, which was built in the early 20th century. And then something like Land of the Lions, which was built in the early 21st century. So you've got 200 years of different time periods and styles and, and knowledge of building and things like that. Um, so you get all sorts of different areas. That's not something that I want to replicate in this zoo. I want a uniform modernist look throughout. But there is room within that to have different takes on the modernist style. Uh, so I'm bringing in some of the aesthetic that I use elsewhere to this build to tie it in, but it will look a little different to the other enclosures in the forest. Um, I hope that you, uh, that you think that looks good, but uh, if not, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Or if you like it, let me know in the comments. Don't just, uh, don't just do the negative ones. <laughs> I'm using those um, aquatic rocks here again, like we used in Lima Heights. Put the different colours in to match the, um, I think it's the temperate rock, if I recall correctly, that we're using around the rest of the water feature. Now, I mentioned last week uh, the plans for the future of the zoo and the different areas we've got coming up. So, 
you know that we are looking at building the jungle now that we are finished uh, or very nearly finished with the forest so what I'm interested to know is when there are more areas in the zoo on the go what would you guys prefer to see do you want to see one area started and worked all the way through and then finished like we've pretty much done with the forest apart from our brief foray into the desert for the meerkats or would you rather see each week a different area of the zoo being worked on so we might be in the jungle one week and then the desert the next week and then the maybe the nocturnal house or something the week after so if you have a preference let me know in the comments and I'll take it on board now that's a little sleeping area for the pandas I've got the new little African steps in there which is uh, looks pretty good I'm a big fan of those new pieces this is going to be covered up with vegetation so that the guests can't see them so the pandas get some privacy because they're pretty shy and I move the um, the habitat gate uh, for the keepers so they don't walk straight into it which wouldn't be great and now we're making a feeding area for them we're going to have enrichment feeders obviously but I wanted a, a little feeding platform for them just to get a bit more of the white concrete on the inside of the enclosure which I've not really done before and some steps up to it for them sometimes they walk up these sometimes they jump it's going to be quite the executive uh, house for these guys set you back a good few million on the market luckily uh, they don't have to pay for it because the guests do now we're getting some more of the tacton style shapes onto the outside of the building again just to tie everything in nicely these black um, tops to the some of the structure get removed as well so I went off them pretty quickly after adding them and then rounding off the back of the enclosure as well this enrichment item goes really nicely onto this bridge that was just a complete accident I was just wondering where to put it I thought hey I wonder if it fits on the bridge and it lines up perfectly with those fences uh, so yeah just a happy accident there and I'm trying to hide this, um, what's it called, a rubbing post, I think, into the sleeping area so it doesn't stand out too much because I think it's kind of ugly. And now we're building the climbing structure. Uh, I built it out of these new concrete poles because they're tagged as climbable, but um, they're not. <laughs> well, they're, they're not for pandas anyway. Maybe they need to be bigger animals. Maybe a, a bear or something would climb it rather than a panda. Um, but I really like the look of it, so I put wooden poles that they can climb up alongside it to get them up there and then encourage them up here with one of the enrichment items and now of course it's a tapton zoo enclosure so it's going to have a sign with some overlapping letters in the Noto Sans font which as you know I'm a big fan of uh, this one I really like I think it's one of the better ones that I've done especially when it's recolored to represent the, the pandas I thought when the custom billboards came out that I'd be using those for all the signs because I love a bit of Photoshop but um, this font just goes so nicely into the zoo and with it being recolorable and with you being able to put the letters wherever you want I find I just end up using this all the time for the for the main signs and then I use the custom billboards for the educational signs for the animals this is just a little bio roof to finish the roof off we're getting pretty close to being done now just some final touch-ups in the garden area so we're getting some bamboo to soften the inside of the enclosure in the same sort of smoked colour that we used in the forest cafe and then we move up to the balcony to finish that off we need to put a barrier up there to stop the guests from diving in to the enclosure <laughs> so we're going to use the, uh, the metal poles as per usual and then incorporate some of the wooden pieces from the New Africa pack as well so that will tie it into the front of the enclosure and now we put the plants in or the rest of the plants I should say now just while I finish off the balcony in the garden area I'm just going to show you a couple of new additions to the zoo that I've made in the past week firstly Maurice and his pals now have little statues at the entrance to the desert area and secondly I put a webcam in Penguin Palace by the nesting area so that the guests can see the penguins when they're on the nest and I want to have a feed of that on video screens somewhere in the zoo and probably the meerkats as well now I know you can't do it live in Planet Zoo but what I can do is take video record it and then put it onto 
a video screen somewhere in the zoo which I think will look really cool so I'm going to try and do that next episode. Let's go back to the front of the building uh, where well, I'm going to put some plants in. I wanted some planting in the front as well so we're going to have some plants hanging down from the doorway a couple of different types mainly wisteria with this alpine behind it just to make it a bit more interesting I stole that idea um, saw it a few days ago and I cannot remember who was doing it uh, if it was you and you're watching this I apologize <laughs> in fact let me know in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll credit you or something because I just cannot remember who I stole that from and then some uh, more formal garden out the front just to set off the front of it and again soften the white at the front and give that mix between the white concrete and the green foliage that we like to have uh, in many places as possible and in a minute I'll be adding in the new uh, viewpoint facilities which are so useful to, to drag guests to where you want them to be in your zoo I put them into the upper viewing galleries in the penguin pool and we finally have people up there so I'm using them here to get them up into the upper gallery as well and that's the House of the Red Panda complete I'll leave you to enjoy the end cinematics thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week